going to try to describe to you how the cryostat on the South Pole Telescope works. Um, this discussion is accompanied by a PDF. If you have it open right now, you should see a key that says um, temperature, status, and phase. Now, the cryostat essentially uses properties of helium to cool successive stages um, up to about 250 millikelvin. That's almost absolute zero. It's a bit ironic that we have to cool things here in Antarctica where the South Pole Telescope lives, but um, that is nevertheless necessary. Um, so let's move on from the key to the diagram. Um, so here's a diagram without any coloration, um, and we see a big main plate in the background, and that essentially is um, the idea is to keep it around 4 Kelvin and have it serve as a heat sink. Um, but also a shield for higher Kelvin material um, elsewhere. This whole thing would be surrounded by a box that's kept at about 50 Kelvin with an air gap um, to shield it from external um, radiation or heat sources. Um, so you have this main plate, and if you look at it, there are some switches. Um, and then some pumps, and each of the pumps has some activated charcoal in it. And um, the charcoal, when it's cold, it absorbs um, helium in whatever form very effectively. And then when it's warm, it expels it very effectively. Um, so this is going to be important in how the fridge works later. And um, because we're going to change these from warm to cold, we may or may not always want them to be connected to the main plate. Um, because if we're cooling them down, um, you know, connecting to them, them to the main plate uh, may help with that, but we don't want the main plate to get too warm either. Um, so there are various switches which can be um, controlled. Uh, they're open when their voltage is uh, zero, and then when you put a higher uh, voltage on um, that switch, it actually becomes thermally conductive, and so it's effectively closed. So that's how those switches, um, they're kind of drawn in this mechanical fashion, but they're controlled um, electrically. Um, and now the end stage, uh, UC stands for ultra-cold, and IC stands for intermediately cold or interstage, uh, however you want to think of it. Um, and the end goal is to get the ultra-cold pump um, down to 250 millikelvin. And the interstage, or IC, is more just there as um, a buffer between the UC and the helium-4 pump. And we use helium-4 on the, the first um, kind of pump circuit and helium-3 on the next two, uh, mostly because helium-4, we're going to use uh, the fact that the helium-4 condenses, um, and helium-4 has a higher temperature condensation point. So because helium-3 has such a low uh, temperature condensation point, it would be, you know, a chicken and egg problem to even get something cold enough to condense it, uh, more or less to use the properties of evaporative cooling to get it even cooler. Um, so we use helium-4 at first, um, and the goal is to condense a bunch of it um, down into the, the buckets on the bottom and then cause it later um, to evaporatively cool. And then the helium-4 is connected um, uh, to the condensation uh, points uh, of the IC and the UC stages, which will get quite cold at that stage, and they'll be cold enough to condense helium-3. Um, but ultimately, we're, we're going to be using the, the, the UC uh, pump in the instrument itself. Um, that's the portion uh, that um, that portion needs to get the most cold, that 250 milli millikelvin. All right, so let's go to our first step. So the main plate is about uh, 4K and all the switches are going to be off um, and all the pumps are going to be off 
and um, the links between the helium-4 pump and the IC pumps um, between the, the bucket at the bottom and, and those pumps, um, it's going to be too warm to get in helium-3 at this point. So that's illustrated by the purple, and uh, blue is kind of the ideal native temperature um, of, of everything else, um, so we're on, we're on 4K for that, that plate. Um, so that's how we start out. And um, this is a bit of an optimization. So the um, uh, basic idea is we're going to want to um, work on the helium-4 pump first, then the IC pump, then the UC pump. Um, however, uh, we will need helium-3 gas in the UC pump at precisely a stage, and we don't want to uh, wait around for a while to get that. Um, so we're going to do that first, even though we're not going to use the gas until much later. Um, so basically here we turn on the UC pump, which means the activated charcoal um, expels all its helium-3 um, gradually as the UC pump heats up into gas. And that's why we have a bunch of gray uh, fluffy stuff floating around in the diagram underneath the UC pump now. And at the same time, there's a tiny little note that um, when the switch gets too hot, because uh, it's connected to the UC pump, when the switch gets hot, um, that causes it to be more thermally conductive. Um, we don't want to dump a lot of heat on the, on the main plate. So we periodically, you know, we're always checking if that, that switch gets too hot, and if it is too hot, then we turn off the UC pump for a little bit, and then turn it back on, but not as much. Um, and then, um, after the UC pump gets to 50K, we assume, you know, all the helium gas, helium-3 gas has been expelled by that point. Um, so, um, we can uh, kind of move on to the next diagram. And it's going to say half on the UC pump to keep the gas um, in its, its gaseous state. If we turn it off, it's going to get cold and suck up the gas, and we don't want that yet. So the gas is just going to be hanging out there for a while. The UC pump is a little bit warm, but not too warm. Not warm enough that we have to worry about uh, dumping heat onto the main plate. Okay. Now we're really going to get started here. Um, so we're going to do the same thing, basically, with the helium-4 pump. Um, except for uh, when we turn it on and heat it up, it's going to likewise you know, expel all the helium-4 this time instead of helium-3 gas. The helium-4 gas is going to hit that condensation point and it's connected to the main plate uh, and it condenses at a bit higher temperature so it's actually going to start condensing into liquid helium. And that's depicted in um, the, the little bucket down there and we have um, some liquid helium and, and droplets that are condensing and, and accumulating there. Um, so, uh, we do that, and then we can move on um, to the next slide, except for uh, this time, um, this I don't really understand. I'm going to have to ask uh, the expert on the fridge. I think it's another uh, optimization, like I mentioned with turning on the UC pump, even though we're not going to deal with it till much later. Um, I would think that you would check the helium-4 switch to see if it got too hot, because it's connected to the hot pump. Um, and then if it does, you know, make sure to turn off the pump for a little bit. Instead, what they do in the code that does all this is they check the IC switch. And if it gets too hot, you turn the helium-4 pump off and then half on. And I think that that, you know, that works on some level in that the helium pump gets hot, helium-4 pump gets hot, then the helium-4 switch gets hot. If that gets hot enough, then the helium-4 pump starts to dump heat onto the main plate, which starts to dump heat onto the IC switch. So eventually there's some connection to the IC switch, but it seems a little too delayed for me. Um, but in any case, um, in the code, uh, they check if the IC switch gets um, too hot, and if it does get too hot, they turn off the helium-4 pump for a little bit, and then turn it back on, um, but uh, not to as high of a level. You know, of course, still high enough to push out um, helium-4 gas 
uh, from that activated charcoal, um, but not as hot as it, it was initially. Okay, so we have some condensation of helium-4, which is exciting. Um, so let's move on. Um, so then we're gonna kind of put the helium-4 pump in stasis mode to keep uh, gas from, you know, accumulating back on that activated charcoal and still just, you know, like, wait and wait and wait and, and more and more helium-4 is gonna condense here, which is, is awesome. Um, so, uh, we're going to wait a minute for that to happen, and then we're going to move on. Um, so now we're going to move to the next portion in the sequence. Um, so we're going to turn on the icy pump heater, which is going to start expelling helium-3 from the icy pump, uh, from its activated charcoal. And then we get a lot of helium-3 gas in there, but, um, the condensation point isn't yet cold enough. Um, you know, we haven't really changed the temperature of that at all, so it's not going to condense or anything like that. And then again, we're going to check. Um, this time the check makes sense to me. If the IC switch gets uh, too hot, um, then we turn off the IC pump and then uh, for a little bit and then turn it back on, um, but not as much. Um, but still enough to keep all that helium-3 in its gaseous state. In the meantime, we're still condensing helium-4. So condensing helium-4. All right, so what's next in this exciting tale? Back to our little happy world, we have a main plate that we've very carefully kept, you know, not getting too hot um, by, you know, flipping, uh, turning down the pumps when, when they heat it up too much, um, when they heat up the switches too much, which would uh, cause them to be able to dump heat onto the main plate. Um, so now we're just going to wait for a while. Um, so we are, we've been condensing helium-4 um, these past few slides, and we're going to wait for a whole 25 minutes to condense helium-4. Um, and for some context, this whole cycle takes about, um, you know, five to seven hours, depending on the state your fridge was um, in before. It takes a while, and it has to be done every 30 hours or so. Um, and then we're able to observe. We have a cool enough um, stage to observe um, the cosmic microwave background for uh, for 30 hours, approximately, um, after this fridge cycle is done. So we're waiting 25 minutes. Luckily, uh, like a cooking show, we can just kind of skip to the next stage in the fridge without sitting here for 25 minutes. So we'll go ahead and do that, and I think things are about to get exciting. Okay, yes, they are about to get exciting. Awesome. Um, okay. So what's going to happen here is we're going to turn off the helium-4 pump, and then that activated charcoal wants to absorb um, all the helium-4 uh, gas that's left there. So we see there's no gray left there anymore. And then we have a vacuum there and a pressure differential and all sorts of happy stuff. And um, the helium-4 that was sitting there in liquid form at the bottom starts to uh, evaporate. And we get evaporative cooling as a result. So the bottom starts to get cooler. Um, and the more evaporation we have, uh, the more uh, the cooler that it has the chance to get. And it's connected to those uh, thermal links, the condensation points, on the IC pump and the UC pump. And so, spoiler alert, those are going to get colder and hopefully start to um, condense some gas themselves. Um, but in the meantime, um, we also want to make sure, because the helium-4 pump was just pretty hot and we just, like, turned it off, we want to make sure that it doesn't dump too much heat onto the main plate because we need that to be, um, you know, around 4K. We don't want to warm it up too much. So when the main plate gets too hot, this time we're going to check about the main plate temp. Um, and we're going to turn off the switch. Um, but uh, as long as the main plate isn't too hot, we're going to keep that switch closed. Uh, we actually close that switch at the same time 
that we uh, turned off the helium floor pump uh, to help us dump heat um, because we really want the helium floor pump to, to cool down. We don't want to wait too long for that to happen. We want that, uh, that nice uh, charcoal to absorb all the helium floor and it has to get, uh, the pump has to get cool enough um, for that to happen. Um, so we uh, close the switch but we keep an eye on it and uh, if the main plate gets too hot we take a little break and open the switch for you know um, some number of seconds and then close it back and try again for a while just keeping an eye on the main plate temperature and we basically make sure the main plate doesn't get above 5.4 uh, Kelvin um, and as soon as it gets below 4.5 Kelvin we say okay it's cold enough let's continue dumping heat from the helium floor pump um, okay and then we're gonna wait uh, another 10 minutes this time instead of for helium floor to condense for helium floor to evaporate and um, start to cool and we're basically not using that anywhere directly we're just using that to cool those links to the other pumps which use helium 3 which has a very uh, as I mentioned uh, low temperature um, uh, at which it condenses so we're gonna wait 10 minutes and again we don't really have to wait 10 minutes so let's go to the next slide um, and now we're gonna move on to the next stage so just like we kind of heated one pump at a time, mod that optimization where we kind of started out with the UC pump. Um, we will now move and and um, start to condense uh, the helium three on the IC pump. So we turn on the pump heater, um, just making sure all that gas is expelled. And by now, the helium-4 has been evaporatively cooling for a while. Um, it's cool enough now, uh, the pump is, that we can leave that switch closed, the helium-4 switch closed. And it's just, you know, keeping things cool, keeping that link cool. Um, and now, um, the helium-3 gas at the IC pump stage um, starts to connect because that uh, link is, is cold enough. Um, so it starts to condense. And um, same deal with the UC pump. And we already had, because we turned that on first uh, and it's been running for a while, we've kind of um, kept out uh, a good amount of the helium-3 on the UC stage. Um, so uh, it starts to condense as well. And um, again, since we turned on the IC pump, we keep an eye on the IC switch, uh, making sure it doesn't get too hot because we don't want to dump a lot of heat on the main plate. Um, you'll hear myself repeating myself um, fairly often here just because these stages are fairly symmetrical. Um, but I will indeed repeat myself as the code does, as the cycle does, um, just because, you know, it is something that if you were to draw from memory, um, it's helpful to hear uh, several times. And um, for completeness of the description, uh, it has to be there. So make sure that the IC switch doesn't get too hot while that IC pump heater is on. And um, if it does, we kind of turn the IC pump down a little bit. Um, and so we're condensing uh, helium-3 on both of those stages. And uh, we are uh, pretty excited about that because, uh, spoiler alert, we're going to start to, at some point, um, evaporatively cool those as well and that's what will really get us down um, to the cold temperatures that we need. Alright, uh, next slide. Um, so uh, we're kind of expelled all the gas that we want to from um, the IC pump um, activated charcoal and just want to make sure that it doesn't get reabsorbed so we set the IC pump to some kind of maintenance level of heat and uh, then uh, we also um, wait uh, for the main plate to cool below 5k um, so essentially part of this uh, IC pump being hot and toggling that IC switch could have resulted we're going to dump a little heat onto the main plate so we're just going to wait for it to cool a little bit more um, we're going to need that cool main plate to dump heat from the pumps um, when we start to um, condense on, um, try to condense on um, the IC 
stage and the UC stage. Um, so we're just going to wait for a little bit here. Um, and uh, we also keep an eye on um, this heat exchange. Um, it's labeled hex on the diagram. And I haven't talked about that much. Um, but essentially, there is some heat exchange between the pump and um, those kind of condensation baths down below the little buckets. Um, and they're all technically hex, but we, we care about the helium-4 hex um, because um, the helium-4 evaporatively cooling is what is keeping the condensation points on the IC and the UC stages cold enough to condense helium-3. And we want to notice when we basically run out of helium-4 um, in terms of run out of stuff to evaporatively uh, cool. And we notice that by noticing that the heat exchange uh, starts to actually heat up. Um, so no longer will we be cooling. Uh, we've kind of run out of, of stuff to evaporatively cool. Um, it, uh, it then will start to slowly warm up. And luckily that is... Um, slow because we're still condensing on um, the IC and the UC pump stages, um, but we're almost done condensing most of that um, uh, and ready to evaporatively cool it. But let's see what happens next. We're going to pause for a little bit and we're going to tune, um, tune some of our observation instruments, um, these quantum uh, devices that help us use uh, the properties of um, superconducting um, to make very precise measurements and then uh, using additional quantum properties to actually register those, those precise measurements. Um, but those are going to be a whole other um, podcast or presentation on squids and on TESs, uh, which stands for Transition Edge Sensors. Um, for now, uh, we're just going to say that these instruments, um, once it's cold enough, they can be uh, effectively uh, calibrated, and we start to, to do that at, that at that stage. All right, um, let's move on to the next slide. Um, okay, so, um, okay, we're now going to turn off um, both the IC pump and the UC pump. Um, I thought that maybe these would be sequential because we've done a lot of other stuff sequentially, but we don't do that sequentially this stage um, at this point. Uh, our end goal is going to be to cool the UC pump, but um, the IC pump, you know, now that we're out of helium-4, will help keep things cool. It's, as you can see, um, also connected to uh, the UC pump stage, so it'll help keep things, um, keep things cool. Um, and make sure that the UC pump is uh, thermally isolated from things that are much, much warmer than it. Um, so we turn off the UC pump and the IC pump. Uh, both of them, uh, their activated charcoal draws up all the gas um, and creates a vacuum there. And um, then, because of the pressure differential, um, the helium-3 on both stages starts to evaporate. Um, and again, we kind of, this is more getting the, we're focusing on the, the UC, um, uh, getting that started at this stage. And again, because both these pumps were formerly hot, we're going to keep an eye on um, the UC uh, switch. And if the main plate gets too hot, we're going to open that up. But otherwise, we're going to leave it closed to help dump heat from uh, the UC pump onto the main plate. And the IC pump is going to proceed a little bit less effectively because it's not yet dumping heat because its switch is still open at this stage. And if you're following along on the slides, now we're on um, number 10 um, in terms of the diagram. Cooling the UC pump, says the log. Um, so finally, we wait until the UC pump gets below 23K. 23 Kelvin, and then it's cold enough that we can keep the UC uh, switch cold. 
Um, previously, these were, you know, the pumps, when they're heated up, they're heated, you know, to about 50K. So connecting that to a 4K plate dump a lot of heat, but we don't want the plate again to get too hot. Um, so in the meantime, we're starting to evaporatively cool um, on the UC stage and the IC stage as well. Um, so now uh, we do the same. So we already turned off the IC pump, um, but now uh, we're actually going to uh, close the switch, the IC switch, to let it dump more of um, its heat onto the main plate and just keeping an eye on that um, main plate temperature and toggling the switch until the IC pump gets cool enough, again, below 23 Kelvin. In the meantime, um, both the IC stage and the UC stage are evaporatively cooling and just getting cooler and cooler and cooler. And then we wait a while. We're um, done in terms of mechanical stuff that we need to do um, once we're able to leave um, the IC switch closed because it's cold enough, um, then we just evaporatively cool uh, the IC and the UC stage and um, if we wait long enough and we pay attention to the temperatures, we'll see that the UC stage will get down to 250 millikelvin. Um, so that is the fridge cycle of the South Pole Telescope, SPT, um, and more on how and why we need it to be so cold in the observational sensors um, that uh, take advantage of this and uh, the observations uh, which require this on a later uh, podcast.